Fuzzing is a very important step when it comes to hacking. It simply means sending random data to a target application to see how it behaves to each input. The hope is obviously to get the application to misbehave in some way that could lead us to discover a vulnerability. In this video, we'll talk about web fuzzing, meaning fuzzing web applications for directories, files, parameters, etc. that could further lead us to discover unknown vulnerabilities on that particular web application. We'll use a tool called Fuff, which automates this fuzzing process. Basically, it can keep sending random inputs continuously to the application and filters out the responses according to your liking. You can install Fuff on your Linux machine with apt by saying sudo apt install fuff. It comes pre-installed with Kali Linux. When it comes to web fuzzing, we usually rely upon a good word list. One such good word list collection is called Seclis. You can once again install it with apt by typing sudo apt install Seclis. It also comes pre-installed with Kali Linux. All right. Now let's get our hands dirty with all the fuzzing. We'll use fuff to fuzz a web application. If you want to try this at your home, do not, I repeat, do not choose a live website as your target. Unless of course you have prior written permission from the owner. Instead, you can simply join this free try hack me lab called fuff. The link will be in the description below. Simply join the room, download the OpenVPN configuration file, and then connect to it using the OpenVPN CLI. And finally, start the machine. You now have yourself a target web application on which you can practice fuzzing with fuff. First, you can type in fuff space dash h to see all the various options fuff has. We will start with enumerating all the directories of the web application. First, pass in the word list that you want to use with the W flag. I'll be using one from the seclist bundle. When you pass in a word list, you will also get to choose a keyword that you can use to tell fuff where to inject the word list entries. The default keyword name is fuzz all in caps. You will obviously also need to pass the URL with the U flag. And since we want to enumerate directories, I'll place the fuzz keyword at the end of the URL like this. So this basically means fuff is going to substitute each entry in the provided word list at this particular place in the URL. Simply execute the command and fuff is now doing its job. You can immediately see it generated some output. Basically, it tells you if any of the inputs that it sent to the application has got an appropriate response. You can obviously define what this appropriate response is. For example, you can see a lot of entries got a response with the status code 200, but with a size of zero bytes. We can tell fuff not to show us the responses which are empty by using the filter size flag. Simply type in fs followed by zero, basically telling fuff to filter out all the responses that are empty. In other words, to not show us the responses which have the size zero. And now we have a much clearer view of the results because all the empty responses are not shown. For each entry, fuff also shows you the status code, size, words, lines, and even the duration that it took to receive the response from the server. We were already able to discover four directories of this website in a very short span. Similarly, we can also go ahead and fuzz the file names on the website instead of the directories. If you notice, the home page of our target is index.php. So we can go ahead and try to discover or fuzz the PHP files that the application hosts. I will use the same command as before, but with a slight modification. I will add a .php after the first keyword. And in this case, I also want to see only the responses that have the HTTP status code 200. So I will add a match code flag and specify 200. And soon enough, we were able to find four PHP files on the website. And one of it looks very interesting. It leaks the database information and different configurations of the target web application. And it also allows the attacker to reset the database and change the credentials to default. The point here is that fuzzing can lead to the discovery of many interesting things on the target application, which can further help us to craft an exploit. Another thing to note is that you can not only filter or match the status codes and the response sizes, but you can also do the same for the number of words, lines, duration, and even match or filter the responses against a regular expression. 
How cool is that? If you want to fuzz more than one place in the URL, you can do that by making use of multiple fuzz keywords. For example, let's say we want to fuzz for files of various types of web extensions and not just .php. In this case, I will use two word lists. One to enumerate the file name and the second one to enumerate the extensions. I will define two keywords, fuzz1 for the file name and fuzz2 for the extensions. And now in the URL, I insert both these keywords in their respective places and that's it. Fuff is now fuzzing all the files of all the different types of extensions. Similarly, you can also fuzz parameter names and their values, be it a get parameter or a post parameter. For example, we have this endpoint on our target and we are trying to find out the name of the parameter that accepts an integer value. I simply pass in the appropriate word list from the setlist bundle and put the first keyword in place of the parameter name. But you can see here that there are a lot of responses with the size 691. These are all probably noise and it's a server's way of telling us those parameters do not exist. So we will use the FS flag to filter out the results with the size 691 so that we only see valid responses. And soon enough, we find a parameter called ID that accepts an integer value. To fuzz post parameters and values, you will need to use the capital X flag to specify it's a post request and also use the D flag to define the payload data that you want to send in your post request. Additionally, you can even set the headers using the capital H flag. Once again, you can use the fuzz keyword anywhere in the URL or the payload or the headers wherever you want to do the fuzzing. And also feel free to use the filters to see a more appropriate output on your screen. And for the final part, let's try fuzzing the subdomains. Now this is also pretty intuitive. In order to fuzz subdomains, you just insert the fuzz keyword before the domain name like this. And of course use an appropriate word list and you will now be able to enumerate all of the subdomains of that web application. But this may not always work because some websites use virtual hosts to serve their subdomains. And in that case, you can't simply try to fuzz the subdomains directly, but instead you have to use a header called host to mention the subdomain. So in this case, you would use the capital H flag to define a header called host and use the fuzz keyword here. And fuff will now be able to enumerate the virtual hosts of the target web application. So these are the basic scenarios when it comes to fuzzing a web application. But as I already said, fuzzing is not limited to just web applications. It can be done on any kind of application to see how it behaves and reacts to various inputs. So that will be all for this video. I hope you liked it. Thanks for watching. If you did like this video, please do not forget to leave a thumbs up below and also leave a comment in the comment section. If you are not yet a subscriber, please do hit that subscribe button and also turn on the bell icon to receive instant updates from my channel. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, cheers.